Welcome back, space enthusiasts. Today, we embark on a journey through the cosmos to explore the fascinating TRAPPIST-1 system and ponder a question that has captured the imagination of scientists and dreamers alike. Is there hope for TRAPPIST-1 planets with the James Webb Space Telescope? Join us as we delve into the mysteries of this distant planetary system and the revolutionary telescope poised to unveil its secrets. We're living in an extraordinary era where the most cutting-edge space telescope ever crafted. The James Webb Telescope is poised to revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos. With its incredible capabilities, it can peer into the atmospheres of distant exoplanets, opening a window into worlds beyond our own. Among the countless celestial bodies awaiting scrutiny, the Trappist-1 planets and other Earth-sized orbs orbiting red dwarf stars stand out as tantalizing target. These pint-sized stars might seem unassuming, but their planetary entourage holds immense promise. The burning question, if we spy an atmosphere, could we spy the telltale signs of water vapor? Could this hint at oceans, making these distant realms more Earth-like and potentially habitable? Yet, Red dwarves have a dark side. In their youth, they unleash titanic flares capable of scorching their nearby planets. It's a cosmic paradox, the potential for habitability overshadowed by stellar fury. Enter Evelyn McDonald, a brilliant PhD candidate from the University of Toronto. Together with her collaborators, she's embarked on a bold quest. They've simulated a menagerie of these small, rocky worlds orbiting red dwarfs seeking insights into their atmospheric compositions and potential habitability. Their findings promise to unveil the secrets of these alien realms and illuminate the prospects for life beyond our solar system. We're diving into the nitty-gritty of planetary climates here. Picture this. You've got these exoplanets, slap some land masses on them, and now we're playing detective. The big question is, can we spot enough clouds forming in the right spots for the James Webb Space Telescope? JWST to catch wind of them? And just how much data crunching will it take to unlock the secrets held within? It's a riveting conversation delving into the hunt for oceans and atmospheres on planets orbiting red dwarf stars. So, buckle up and enjoy the ride as we chat with Evelyn McDonald. Evelyn, we're riding the wave of technology with powerful telescopes like JWST and ground-based observatories propelling us deeper into space than ever before. What's the latest scoop on what we're uncovering about planets orbiting those M dwarfs? Well, when it comes to those sizzling hot Jupiters, we're making strides. But when we shift our gaze to smaller, potentially Earth-like planets chilling in the habitable zone, it's a whole new ball game. Right now, we're still on the hunt for the Holy Grail, atmospheres. Before we can even dream about habitability, we need to know if these planets can even hold onto an atmosphere. It's like peeling back the layers of cosmic mystery one atmosphere at a time. Picture this, planets huddling up close to their stars, basking in the glow of radiation pouring out like there's no tomorrow. But here's the kicker, can these planets even hold onto an atmosphere under such intense stellar bombardment? It's the million dollar question, folks. But let's talk habitability, shall we? We're itching to know if these cosmic neighbors are sipping on water vapor cocktails. Heck, we'd love to know how many olives are floating in that drink. But here's the kicker, we're not quite there yet. Sure, we've had some jaw-dropping revelations from the James Webb Telescope, like the TRAPPIST-1b and TRAPPIST-1 see being as barren as the Sahara. But when it comes to those cozy red dwarf planets, it's a bit like searching for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Has anyone spotted an atmosphere around a red dwarf planet? Well, not exactly. We're talking about rocky worlds here, folks, not your garden variety gas giants. It's like trying to find a grain of sand on a beach the size of the Milky Way. We're giving it our best shot, though. Planets like Phase 1b and c are our best bets for now, being the stellar neighbors closest to home. Here's the scoop. Those stars cozying up to their planets make for prime observation targets. But here's the kicker. 
they're also less likely to play host to atmospheres. So, naturally, these are the cosmic celebrities we're shining the spotlight on first. And hey, it's no surprise we haven't spotted any atmospheres on them yet. But hold on to your space helmets, folks. Just because we haven't struck gold with these stars doesn't mean we won't hit pay dirt with planets in the habitable zone. It'd be the jackpot of the cosmos if we could. But hey, let's not count our exoplanets before they're discovered. Remember when we snagged those observations of Trappist 1b and c? Talk about speedy delivery straight from the J, WST's Cosmic Pantry. Now, about crunching the data, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. From snazzy spectra to tracking transits, each observation brings its own cosmic conundrum to the table. So buckle up, because the journey to unraveling the mysteries of our cosmic neighbors is just getting started. Let's shed some light on this cosmic dance. When a star's rays meander through a planet's atmosphere, if it even has one, it's like catching a glimpse of celestial magic. But here's the kicker. It takes a tad longer for those rays to waltz through, adding a dash of complexity to our observations. And let's not forget the cosmic obstacle course we face when cooler planets come into play. They're like cosmic ninjas, sneaking through transits less often and casting fainter shadows. So yeah, making sense of their cosmic whispers isn't exactly a walk in the park. Now don't go thinking I've got insider info on these observations. That'd be quite the plot twist. But hey, I stumbled upon a paper just yesterday that spilled the cosmic beans. Turns out, if we want the full scoop on terrestrial exoplanets chilling in the habitable zone of red dwarfs, we're talking hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of J-double UST time. And let me tell you that Cosmic Buffet hasn't been dished out yet. So much for a slam dunk, huh? Turns out, deciphering the Cosmic Jigsaw puzzle is trickier than we thought. But hey, let's dream a little dream. Imagine we do snag those observations. Now it's time to play Cosmic Detective. What secrets could be lurking in those celestial snapshots? That's where the real cosmic magic happens. Let's dive into the fascinating world of exoplanet atmospheres, shall we? Picture this. If there's one thing that would stand out like a neon sign in a cosmic desert, it's carbon dioxide. Yup, it's got this whopping big peak that practically screams, hey, I've got an atmosphere. But here's where it gets juicy. In my recent research, I've been playing cosmic detective trying to connect the dots between what we can't directly observe and how it affects what we can see. Specifically, I've been delving into the tantalizing realm of water vapor. Now, picture these planets doing a cosmic tango, with one side forever basking in the star's glow while the other side shivers in eternal darkness. It's like a celestial, hot and cold buffet. But here's the twist, smack dab in the middle of all this. There's this sweet spot where sunlight kisses the planet just right, keeping it toasty warm. We call it the ice-free region. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I've been tinkering with the idea of throwing some land into that cozy ice-free zone and seeing what happens. Why? Because whether there's liquid water in that sunny spot affects how much water vapor dances its way into the atmosphere. It's like a cosmic cocktail party and the amount of water vapor in the mix could tell us a whole lot about these distant worlds. So, buckle up, because we're about to unravel the mysteries of exoplanet climates, one atmospheric signature at a time. Imagine this water, the elixir of life, caught in a cosmic dance between light and darkness. But here's the twist, it's not as simple as you might think. You see, when water gets cozy in the ice-free zone of a tidally locked planet, it's like a forbidden love affair with the atmosphere. It's there, but it's not exactly free to mingle. So, I've been playing cosmic matchmaker, tinkering with where we put land and how much of it there is. Why? Because it turns out, it affects how much water vapor decides to show up in the cosmic party we call the transit spectrum. And let me tell you, the results are a mixed bag of cosmic surprises. Sure, We've managed to spot hints of water vapor here and there, but it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. The signal is faint, the puzzle pieces are scattered, and unraveling the cosmic mystery is no walk in the park. 
But hey, every little drop of water vapor we find is a victory in the quest to understand these alien worlds. Now, cast your mind back a couple of years when we last chatted. Remember how we flipped the script on those tidally locked planets? Forget what you thought you knew about cosmic deserts and icy wastelands. Turns out, the reality might be more like a lush jungle on one side and a frozen tundra on the other. It's a cosmic twist worthy of a sci-fi blockbuster, and we're just getting started in unraveling its secrets. Picture this, a cosmic ballet where the near side of a tidally locked planet is like a steamy jungle, releasing water vapor into the atmosphere like there's no tomorrow. But hold on to your space helmets, because there's a catch. The amount of water the planet has, and how fast it's spinning, can throw a cosmic curveball into the mix. Now, let's talk simulations. We've been tinkering with the idea of infinite water reserves, assuming the planet's oceans are bottomless pits. In this cosmic playground, water vapor dances its way into the atmosphere and gets whisked around like a cosmic waltz. But here's the kicker, no matter where we sprinkle our land, if there's water to spare, it ends up right smack dab in the middle of the day side. It's like a cosmic version of Earth's Hadley circulation, where the sun's fiery gaze heats things up at the equator, causing air to rise and water vapor to play a game of cosmic hopscotch. So, whether it's jungle or desert, the cosmic winds have a way of bringing water to the party, and we're just beginning to scratch the surface of this cosmic conundrum. Let's dive into the cosmic waterworks, shall we? Picture this on Earth. Rain dances its way around the equator like a celestial waltz. But on these tidally locked planets, the party's happening right at the substellar point, smack dab in the middle of the scorching dayside. Now, imagine the cosmic choreography. Air spirals upward, twirling its way toward the night side before pirouetting back along the surface. And here's where it gets interesting. If there's an ocean elsewhere on the day side, that returning air gathers up water vapor like a cosmic sponge. So rain showers become a daily affair at the substellar point, creating a cosmic hydrological cycle trapped in the heart of the day side. But here's the kicker. When it comes to spotting the celestial rain dance from afar, things get tricky. You see, transit spectroscopy, our cosmic detective tool, focuses its gaze on the Terminator, the boundary between light and darkness. So, we need to connect the dots between ocean presence, water accumulation at the substellar point, and the cosmic rain dance at the Terminator. It's like trying to catch a glimpse of a hidden dance party from the sidelines. But hey, unraveling the cosmic connections between water on the surface and its journey through the atmosphere is all part of the cosmic adventure. And trust me, we're just getting started. Let's dive into the cosmic waterworks, shall we? Picture this on Earth. Rain dances its way around the equator like a celestial waltz. But on these tidally locked planets, the party's happening right at the substellar point, smack dab in the middle of the scorching day side. Now imagine the cosmic choreography. Air spirals upward, twirling its way toward the night side before pirouetting back along the surface. And here's where it gets interesting. If there's an ocean elsewhere on the day side, that returning air gathers up water vapor like a cosmic sponge. So rain showers become a daily affair at the substellar point, creating a cosmic hydrological cycle trapped in the heart of the day side. But here's the kicker. When it comes to spotting the celestial rain dance from afar, things get tricky. You see, transit spectroscopy, our cosmic detective tool, focuses its gaze on the Terminator, the boundary between light and darkness. So, we need to connect the dots between ocean presence, water accumulation at the substellar point, and the cosmic rain dance at the Terminator. It's like trying to catch a glimpse of a hidden dance party from the sidelines. But hey, unraveling the cosmic connections between water on the surface and its journey through the atmosphere is all part of the cosmic adventure. And trust me, we're just getting started. Let's talk cosmic connections, shall we? We've managed to tease out some hints, but let me tell you, it's like trying to decipher Morse code in a thunderstorm. The signals are there, but they're buried beneath a cosmic cacophony. Now, picture yourself soaring through space, 
perched at the star planet Lagrange Point Lone, gazing down at the planet below. Assuming it's got an atmosphere, oceans, and a smattering of land masses, what do you reckon you'd see? Well, buckle up, because it's a wild ride. Depending on how much land is scattered across the sunlit side, you might find yourself peering through a swirling canvas of clouds, with hints of ice and land masses peeking through. But here's the cosmic kicker. Clouds are like the elusive ghosts of the atmosphere, notoriously tricky to pin down in our 3D models. So, while you might catch glimpses of land and ice, chances are you're mostly staring at a sea of clouds. Yep, to the frustration of every modeler in the galaxy, clouds steal the cosmic spotlight. But hey, the view might change depending on the planet's surface makeup. It's a cosmic guessing game, and we're just along for the ride. You've hit the cosmic nail on the head. Will those clouds stretch all the way to the Terminator? Or are we in for a cosmic bullseye? Well, hold on to your space boots, because it's a wild ride. Sure, you've got clouds swirling around the dayside, bringing a chilly vibe to the party. But here's the cosmic twist. At the Terminator, things get a little murky. Picture this. Thick clouds acting like cosmic curtains, blocking out the starlight and playing tricks on our cosmic senses. So, when we're peering at the planet's silhouette during transit spectroscopy, those clouds can throw us for a loop. They make it seem like the planet's surface is higher up than it actually is, casting shadows on our cosmic detective work. And here's the kicker. The more water vapor in the mix, the thicker the clouds at the Terminator. But here's where things get dicey. Cloud models are like cosmic roulette, with huge uncertainties about their behavior and impact. We know they'll be there, swirling and dancing across the night side, but predicting their exact moves? That's the million-dollar question. So, as we gaze across the cosmic horizon, we're left with more questions than answers. But hey, that's the beauty of cosmic exploration, isn't it? Every discovery leads to more cosmic mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Picture this. You're scanning the cosmic horizon, hoping to catch a glimpse of water vapor in your observations. And let me tell you, if you spot even a hint of it at the Terminator during those transits, it's like striking cosmic gold. But here's the cosmic conundrum. How do you translate that water vapor signal into an estimate of just how much H2O is sloshing around on the planet's surface? Well, buckle up, because it's a wild ride. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science we are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blisovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe live queue, and as sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live queue and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.